guys welcome back to the curly reader my name is Amanda and today I want to talk to you about all of the books that I added to my Goodreads TBR in the month of November all right so you guys I finally feel like I'm like back in the groove of keeping track of my TBR each month or books that I'm adding to my TBR each month um, over this past year I have just really failed at this a lot to the point where I was considering whether or not I was going to continue doing these videos going into the new year but I really like doing them I really like sharing with you guys what's on my radar what's being put on my radar where I'm getting recommendations from I just think that that's really interesting information as far as specifically where I'm getting my um influence from and yeah so anyway all of that to say I have nine books to share with you this month which is more than a lot of the months um, of this year so nine books a lot of these are historical fiction um, at the beginning of November I hosted um, Historathon 2.5 and that is a readathon that centers all around historical fiction and so yeah I got a lot of historical fiction recommendations from people that were participating in Historathon and yeah so anyway, let's just get into this. These are not all, I was going to say these are not all historical fiction. They aren't. These are not all historical fiction. However, these are all adult books. Um, there's a couple nonfiction. Most of them are fiction, um, but they are all adult this time around. So yeah, let's get into it. I keep looking down because my list is down here. So the first one that I want to talk about is The Impossible Girl by Lydia Kang. Um, I heard about this on the Mom Advice. She is a, okay, so Mom Advice is a um, book Facebook group that I've been part of for many, 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 many years. Um, and she, the runner, Amy, has started a podcast and I listened to one of the podcasts and I got the recommendation from the podcast. So the name of the podcast is um, Book Gang and our mom advice book gang, one or the other. And anyway, I got this recommendation from them. It's called Impossible Girl by Lydia Kang. And it is set in Manhattan in 1850 and it has to do with a girl who has two hearts. And the thing that makes her, I mean, she is a medical anomaly and because of that, she's worth a lot of money. Um, back then people would dig up dead bodies to use as cadavers and they were called resurrectionists and so she becomes a resurrectionist and like runs her own business to try to avoid people finding out about her because she knows that if she were to die she would be worth a lot of money to the medical profession and so she doesn't want yeah that to happen and so that's all I really know but that's what that one's about and it sounded really really interesting um Amy highly recommended it so that means it's hopefully gonna be a good one all right the next one I have on this list is the mother tongue English and how it got that way by Bill Bryson um I saw that Katie from life between words had mentioned this like in a comment about something else on her Instagram account and this is a nonfiction book that talks about just the English language and why we say things the way we do, the differences between British English and American English, and why things are different and how it got to be that way. Obviously, that's the subtitle. Um, but yeah, that sounded really fun. So I added that one. Um, the next one that I have here is How to Find Your Way in the Dark by Derek B. Miller. This is the only one on this list that I could not figure out where I heard about this book from. I was so diligent this month about keeping notes on as I'm adding things to my TBR, keeping notes on who was recommending it to me, and this one slipped through the cracks, and I have no idea where I heard about this book from. Um, but this is set in 1938, and it follows a 12-year-old boy, Sheldon Horowitz. It is an adult novel, though, and he has lost his mother, and his father dies in a suspicious vehicle accident. Um, and so he goes to live with his uncle. This is pre-World War II, and so it's just about life during that time you're thinking like great depression era era like between the two world wars and he is out to seek vengeance on whoever killed his father he's convinced somebody killed his father and he wants to seek vengeance on them and so yeah it's just i really love this time period specifically 
pre-World War II, just kind of like that in-between time. And I thought that this sounded really good. So it got added to the TBR. All right. And then we get into a bunch of books that were recommended by my subscribers. So like I said, during Historathon, I got a lot of recommendations um, in different comments on different videos and just all the things. And I love it so much. I love getting your recommendations and looking up these books. And so I picked, what is it, five of them and added them to my TBR. So these are the ones that made it on to my Goodreads TBR. Um, the first one is called The Nazi Officer's Wife. Um, and this is by Edith Hahn Beer. I think this might be nonfiction. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but this is about a Jew who fled to Munich during World War II. She kind of assumed a new alias. Um, her family was all taken away to the ghetto. Um, she somehow escapes and flees to Munich under a new alias and she meets a Nazi officer and falls in love with him. And she confides in him and tells him that she is Jewish and he still marries her. He still wants to be married to her. And they just lie about her um, heritage and her ethnicity. And it's just, I guess, a story about her and how she just lived in constant fear that she was going to get found out. And um, what them as a couple, they as a couple, that makes more sense went through during that time. So that sounded really interesting to me. Um, and that recommendation came from Melissa Cole. So thank you. All right, the next one that I got from my subscriber is The Promise by Damon Gal Galgut. Um, this one I got, I'm pretty sure it was a comment on my, um, I did a video about books that caused me to do internet deep dives. And one of them was about apartheid. And I think she commented on that video with this recommendation. Anne Gibson is the one who recommended this one. And this one is set in South Africa. Um, it follows a white family who upon the death of, I think the father, um, they kind of all come together and they had always promised their black housekeeper that she could have, they would give her some land and a house and all this stuff. And then once their father dies, like none of that comes to fruition. And so they're all kind of faced with this broken promise. And um, I think it just has to do with them realizing what's really going on as far as living in South Africa and apartheid and rela race relations and all of that. And so um, that one sounded really, really good. I'm pretty sure that one won some awards as well. Um, and it's probably, if it won a bunch of adult awards, it means it's probably literary fiction. So I don't know. We'll see. But I'm looking forward to it. All right. Another um historical fiction recommendation that I got is Wild Women and the Blues by Denny, Denise, Denise Bryce, I believe is the author's name. Sorry, I wrote it weird in my journal. And so yeah, anyway, and this one was recommended by Abigail Raphael. Um, this is one that is dual timeline, but it's set in the 1920s. The historical timeline is set in the 1920s in Chicago, just very jazz era. It follows um, a jazz club dancer. Um, I think her name is Honoree something Duvet or something like that. And she is just all in. She wants to be a dancer. She wants to rise in the ranks. She wants to, you know, brush shoulders with all the famous people. And then the modern day timeline is set in 2015 and it follows a film student that is trying to research, I think a filmmaker at the time um, from the 1920s and so he goes to interview Honoré and uh, she's very very elderly at this point and um, is trying to interview her about this filmmaker and learn some things about himself and she's kind of having to confront some things it's about them um, I think it might have to do with uh, black culture during that time too as well but I'm not 100% sure that may be a subplot or part of, not subplot, um, but part of the story as well. All right. Um, another historical fiction that was recommended by a subscriber is A Memory of Violets by Hazel Gaynor. By, and she, this was recommended by Samantha Lance. Um, this is one that is set in 1912 and follows Tilly Harper. Sorry, I keep looking down. My notes are all down here, guys. Um, but this follows Tilly Harper. Um, she moves to London to be an assistant housekeeper for this orphanage, basically. And they're 
the orphans at this orphanage, they're all girls and they're called flower girls because they go out and they sell flowers on the streets. Um, and while she's there, she finds this letter from one of the orphans that had passed away there, um, who had been separated from her sister. And she kind of goes on this mission to find her sister and find out whatever happened to her. And it sounds very, very sad, but it also sounds really good. So I added that one. I, I also know, uh, this subscriber, or Samantha also just mentioned Hazel Gaynor as an author in general was a really good author to read. All right. And then one that is not historical fiction. I think it is um, another one that was a comment on my Google deep dive video um, is I am not Esther. This is by Fleur Beale and this was recommended by R. Richards. Um, and so, yeah, this one is about a cult. And it is about specifically follows this girl who is kind of taken into this cult. It's a very strict religious cult and they make her change her name to Esther. And as she goes along with what they're telling her to do, she starts losing her own identity. And that's really all the synopsis said, but I was like, sounds intriguing. I'm in. Um, so those were the ones that my subscribers recommended. And then I have one last book um, to mention, and that is All the Lonely People. I added this to my TBR um, as a recommendation from Krista um, from Books and Jams. She got the recommendation from the Currently Reading podcast. I know uh, one of the girls there has just raved about this book which made Krista want to pick it up and Krista talking about the book made me want to pick it up. This is the way it all works guys. Um, but this is about an elderly gentleman who lives, I think in like an assisted living, living facility or something along those lines, a retirement home. And he has been telling his, I think daughter that he's fine. He's fine. Everything's great. Everything's wonderful. And all the while he's just really lonely. He's by himself all the time. And so him and somebody else, I think make a lonely people, group and start being friends I think I don't know um but all I know is Krista was talking about it she was super excited about it got me super excited about it so now it's on the TBR so anyway those are the books that I added to my Goodreads TBR in November um have you read any of these books do you recommend any of these books let me know kind of where I should start um and yeah I am looking forward to staying on track with these and like keeping up and being more diligent about making sure I'm tracking where things are coming from um, going forward. And yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Um, I hope that you stick around and subscribe. And until next time, see ya.